What's up guys, back with another educational video. But before we get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm, and share this video so that we get good information out to more people. This week I wanna talk about RPE and RIR. RPE stands for Rate of Perceived Exertion, RIR stands for Repetitions in Reserve, and how it's used in programming. Now I first heard about RPE about 10 years ago, and it was mostly used in powerlifting circles. It's a scale of 10, and it originated in runners. And so they were giving a rate of perceived exertion for a workout of zero as the lowest, being basically there was no effort required whatsoever, to 10 being that was the hardest I could have gone, I could not have gone any harder. That scale has been adjusted for lifting based on proximity to failure. If you hit an RPE of 10, that means you could not have done another rep. So if you're trying to do a set of five and on your fifth rep, you know that if you tried to do another one, you would fail, that's an RPE 10. An RPE nine for that set would have been if you stopped at repetition four, an RPE eight would have been if you stopped at repetition three and so on and so forth. Sometimes maybe you're not sure, maybe you felt like you could have gotten one or two reps and so you can actually use a half RPE so if you felt like maybe you could get one or two more reps, that would be an eight and a half RPE. If you thought you could have done two or three more reps, it would be a seven and a half. Now RIR is basically the same thing, but the opposite side of the coin. And to me, RIR is actually a little bit more intuitive. RIR means repetitions in reserve. If you were doing that same set of five that we talked about, and you couldn't do another repetition, that would be an RIR of zero. If you could have done another rep, it would have been an RIR of one. If you could have done two more reps, it would have been an RIR of two, and so on and so forth. Your RIR equals 10 minus your RPE, or vice versa. If your RPE is seven, that means your RIR is three, so on and so forth. And you can do the half digit increments with RIR as well. Now, whichever one you use is up to you. They're basically the same thing. They help with a few different things in terms of auto-regulation. Many of you know that when you go in the gym, you don't feel the same from time to time, especially if you've been lifting for a long time and your progress is no longer linear. A lot of times you might go in the gym and feel like you're an absolute monster, you're crushing it, and maybe you do you know, 300 pounds for five reps and it was an RIR of three. But the next time, you go in, do 300 pounds for five reps, and it feels like you only had one more and it's an RIR of nine. What RIR and RPE can do is it can help you auto-regulate your training. Meaning, if you go into the gym and you're supposed to do five reps in your program, we're using fives, but you can do this for any rep range, but you can set a defined RPE or RIR and say, I'm shooting for this amount of reps in reserve or RPE, and you adjust the weight to match that RPE and RIR. Now, a few things with RPE and RIR, it tends to work better for more advanced lifters. Beginners, and intermediates even don't really have good ideas of their RPEs and RIRs, especially beginners. Beginners tend to drastically overestimate their RPE, whereas seasoned veterans tend to know a bit better where they are. A beginner might go in and as soon as the set gets hard, they go, oh, that's an RPE nine. When in reality, if they had really pushed themselves, they might've been able to do a few more reps. In fact, I saw a beginner one time who was at one of my camps. They had never really squatted before and they did a single rep and they said, I don't think I could have done another one. And so then we got them a spotter and they did six more reps. So it's one of those things where if you've never really trained close to failure, especially on big compound lifts, it can be really hard to estimate your RPEs. The other thing that helps with is kind of keeping you from overtraining because the research suggests that while training to failure isn't worse than stopping a few reps shy of failure, it's also not better. The most recent research suggests if you're training within two to three reps of failure, you're getting basically all the benefits you would of training to failure without the same fatigue level. The thing about failure is it causes a disproportionate amount of fatigue fatigue compared to stopping just a few reps shy. So for example, if I'm doing squats, maybe I could do 500 pounds for five sets of five at an RPE of seven or eight. But if I took one of those sets to absolute failure, like the first one, I did 500 pounds for eight or nine reps. Now on my next set, if I try to do 500 pounds again, I might get like a couple reps. I'm gonna have to back the weight so far off that now my overall training volume and the load I'm applying to the muscle goes down. So if you stop a few reps shy, many times you can actually get more volume in, you can get more overall mechanical tension, and it allows you to create more growth over the long haul because you're not taxing yourself so much on those sets to failure. 
Now, I'm not saying you can never take things to failure. Taking isolation exercises to failure is probably okay because it just doesn't induce the same level of fatigue as taking a heavy squat or deadlift or something like that to failure. The other criticism that RPE and RIR get is people say, oh, well that training is for wusses. Be a real man, take it to failure. So I've had the experience of going to absolute failure on squats. With something like a 10 rep set going to absolute failure, I know what that requires from me. So if I think my personal best on a squat squat in that range, I think I did 530 for nine reps back in 2015. And I was so fatigued, I couldn't re-rack the weight. The bar set a little bit lower on one side and I got it up on one side and then actually couldn't even fully lock out my lower back. Thankfully, somebody ran from across the other side of the gym and helped me rack it. And then I collapsed to the ground where I stayed there for probably 10 minutes because I was so utterly exhausted. So you're telling me that if I stop that set two reps short of that, that I'm a wuss, that that's not a hard set. People who say RPE seven or eight are not hard sets are people who have never actually trained hard or have never actually trained a heavy lift to failure. It's absolutely a hard set. And especially if you're doing multiple sets, the overall workload is greater. I'm not saying you have to use RPE. I'm not saying you have to use RIR. Some people prefer defined weights. They prefer percentage based programs. What I actually prefer as a coach and to get coached is having a targeted weight, but with an RPE cap. So for example, I might go in the gym and have programmed, you're going to do 500 pounds for a set of five, but with an RPE cap of seven. Meaning that if I'm warming up and I feel like I just don't have it, if I feel like that heavy set of 500 is going to be more like an RPE of nine, then I need to back the weight off or you know, maybe I miscalculate and I'm in the set and I'm trying to get to my fifth rep, but I get to my third rep and I'm like, oh man, that was an RPE of seven right there. Then I just rack it. So it's nice to have that weight, the reps to pick, but then giving an RPE cap. And that's where really where good coaching comes in, in handy. One of the things you can do if you're not sure about how to do this sort of stuff is we do have RPE and RIR based programs on the workout builder. So if you aren't sure how to program this stuff, we can help with that. The workout builder has customizable training templates written by Holly and myself that take care of the guesswork. They take care of your intensity, your RPE, the set number, the reps, but then they give you flexibility on the exercise selection because many people don't have access to the same equipment. Some people don't have access to say a hack squat. Well, well, we group exercises according to the muscles that are worked and kind of the style of exercise so that even if you're at a home gym, you've pretty much got options with what we put down in the workout builder. And we also do have home specific programming, even for people with absolutely minimal equipment. And even in some cases, we have workouts for people with no equipment. It's a really great way to do your programming and it's only $12.99 per month. If you feel like you need a little bit more guidance on this stuff, we also have team bio lane coaches that can help you that program in this style. And so so if you're interested in that, you can submit an inquiry by clicking on the link to coaching below. If you guys have any questions about RPE or you've used this style of training before, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Make sure to share this video, like it, subscribe, and I'll catch you next week.